Moving back to the brakes, there are quite a few parts outstanding including the brake shoes which I'll cover off in this video. Although Don did not specify a tape on the wheel treads, I decided to add one, which means I'll need to do likewise for the brake shoes. At 2 degrees though, it's not visible in the model here. These are going to be quite complex little parts and having them tapered means that they will also be handed, so I'll need three lefts and three rights. As with all things engineering, there are many ways to approach making these parts, and I'll call it out now at the beginning that my approach here is certainly not the most efficient. I'm going to be making the shoes from this section of 10mm mild steel plate, but before I get to work on that, I need to drill and tap a number of mounting holes in my lathe faceplate. Four holes that will be on the outside of the brake shoes, and four that will be on the inside of the brake shoes. The reasons for this, I hope, will become clear later. I tap all of these at M8. I then drill and tap a further four holes, these at M5. After fitting the faceplate into the lathe, I add four M5 bolts into the latter group of holes with lock nuts and then face them down. The intent here being to generate a set of reference faces that are perpendicular to the lathe axis. For the stock, I mark out the centre lines and centre punch it accordingly and then mark out the various diameters that I'll be working to albeit just for a visual guide. Moving the stock onto the mill table, I use the centre punch mark to centre it under the quill. I then centre drill and drill 8 holes to correspond to the M8 holes tapped in the faceplate. After having rather crudely cut the corners off the stock material, I now bolt it to the faceplate using the inner set of 8mm holes. Before I tighten these bolts, I do check that I can get the outer set of bolts into position. With the outer set of bolts removed, I turn the outside diameter. This is not critical, but I will be using this for reference later on. It's also worth noting that a bit more time spent on rough cutting the outline would save a lot of time here. I now partially face off to just under the inside diameter of the brake shoes. This face will form one side of the shoes. After this I turn a shoulder for what will become the mount for the shoes and the knocking you can hear is caused by the outer set of 8mm holes which will come to soon. I now remove the stock, turn it around and bolt it back in place. The surface I have just faced off is now being held against the 5mm bolts mounted into the faceplate, meaning that it is now, theoretically at least, perpendicular to the lathe axis. Before tightening the bolts I use a dial gauge working off the outer diameter to centralise it on the faceplate.
Once I'm happy that it's running true and the stock is firmly clamped down, I repeat the facing off exercise and cut the shoulder on this side too. With the inner and outer faces of the shoes turned along with both sides of the mountain brackets, I now need to remove the centre from the stock and work on the braking surfaces of the shoes. As I've done previously, I go with a quick and dirty method for removing a large chunk of material and grab a 50mm diameter hole saw. I now fit the outer bolts and remove the inner bolts so that I can use a boring bar to bring the centre out to the nominal wheel diameter. As I'm not yet cutting the taper, I've got the boring bar mounted in my fixed tool post. Once I've reached the nominal wheel diameter, I fit the compound slide, set it to 2 degrees and bore the taper. For checking the size, I use one of the wheels from the Loco and when it fits through to the right depth, I'm happy with the diameter. What I have now is a profiled ring from which I have enough material to make eight brake shoes. After clamping it onto the mill table and centering it underneath the quill, I centre drill and drill the holes for the brake gear pins. These are for holding the shoes to the hangers. To mark out the individual shoes I make a simple jig to hold the ring and then use a scry point held in the chuck. I rotate the ring after each pair of shoes. With the tops and bottoms of each shoe marked, I follow my usual approach of using a button and a ruler to mark out the rest of the outline for each of the shoes. To cut out the individual shoes, I first reach my hacksaw. But after punching the vise at the end of the first cut, I defer to the angle grinder using a 1mm cutting disc for the rest. To square off the ends of each, I move back to the mill and working by sight to describe lines use an end mill. After struggling to hold the workpiece for a bit, I remembered some good advice again given by Bruce Volkerding and use a magnet to hold the parts as I locate them in the machine vise. It's then onto some good old fashioned filing to complete the outline for each shoe.
Next I need to cut the slot for mounting the shoes on the hangers and to do so I've made a crude jig. It comprises of a lump of mild steel with a radial shoulder cut at one end which corresponds to the nominal diameter of the wheels and therefore the diameter of the shoes, albeit only on one side due to the taper. I've also placed a piece of flat bar at the back to use as an index. The shoulder is centred front to back, or in other words the centre line of the shoulder is also the centre line of the jig. I've also drilled and tapped an M6 hole to allow me to clamp the shoes in place. With the shoe clamped in place I use a slitting saw to cut a slot through the centre of the shoulder. As the shoe is located against the index at the back of the jig, it is not centred on the x-axis of the mill table, which means the slot is angled and it's this with the taper that makes the shoes handed. As I'm using a 2mm slitting saw and need a 3mm slot, I first cut through on the centre line and then repeat with the saw raised by half a millimetre and then lowered by half a millimetre. I'm obviously getting a bit of flex in the saw blade as it takes a bit of work with my needle files to get a good fit for the hanger. Don does not give any specific information on the angle or the depth of the slot so I try a test fit and start making incremental changes to each with the trial fit between each cut. I end up taking the cut slightly below the shoulder radius and also rotate the vise by approximately one degree to reduce the angle. Once I'm happy with the first I cut the same slot in three more shoes and this first batch are for the right side of the loco. For the left side shoes I rearrange the jig by moving the index to the front side of the vise and repeat the process. To finish off I need to make the six brake gear pins. These are a simple turning exercise but I do set up a mini production process. First I face off a length of 6mm mild steel bar and reset the readout on my X axis. I then set the carriage stop at 9.5mm back from the face and turn down to the pin diameter, zeroing the cross slide index when I've got to dimension. As the top of the pin needs to be turned down to 5.6mm diameter, I reposition the bar to allow me to do so without adjusting the carriage stop. The length of the cut here is not important as it just needs to be longer than the length of the top of the pin at 2.4mm. I make a note of the reading on the cross slide index for this diameter. Next it's onto the mill to drill the hole for this split pin. I've already established the centre of the bar on the Y axis and the end of the bar on the X axis. So I clamp the bar and device against the stop. I then centre drill and drill through at 1.2mm. After cutting off the part turned pin, I move back to the lathe and repeat the process. But for all subsequent pins, I just work to the carriage stop and the cross slide index for the turning and use a setup on the mill to drill the holes. To finish the pins I need to face off the tops and as before I do one and then repeat the cut on all the remaining pins, this time using the collet face as an index.
As I said at the beginning, the approach I've taken here is far from being the most efficient, but I must admit not only am I pleased with the outcome, but I did enjoy making these. I've still got a few more parts to make for the brakes, so I'll continue with these for now. Thanks for watching.